future Puppet News. Finally, news from a source you can trust. Puppets from the year 3000. With help from their senior time machine, they'll uncover history's most mysterious mysteries. Traveling through space and time for that hot historical scoop. Get ready for cold hard facts from warm, squishy puppets. Voted least offensive by our evil alien overlord, Xenu. Future Puppet News. Broadcasting the past from the future. Good evening, film aficionados, and welcome to a special Earth Day chapter of The Nook du Cinema. I am your auteur du jour, Douglas Wells. Huh? I thought we talked about changing that title. <laughs> Fortunately, today I won't be discussing the usual popcorn drivel like the kind pumped out by that hack, Coop. No, my docket is saturated with one of the newest films from cinema's freshest, most dynamic, innovative young faces. I am, of course, talking about me. I present my latest masterpiece based on a true American story, The Dust Bowl. I will show you fear in a bowl full of dust. Life, nature, madness, dust. I'm interrupting this highly inaccurate and cliched student film with a breaking weather report. Climate change is leading to bigger and bigger storms. Right now, we're seeing a massive tsunami approaching Puppet Stan after last night's earthquake. <laughs> student <gasps> film? I'll have you know I never even set foot inside a school. Uh, listen <laughs> here, you little blob. You don't know the first thing about the Dust Bowl. hi yeah. uh, <laughs> Ooh. Sounded like that was getting a little tense. Uh, ugh. These earthquakes are becoming more frequent because of fracking puppet morons like him. Please, as if a mere puppet could somehow twist the ugh. whims of the environment. And besides, she ruined my segment. Ugh. He was inaccurately portraying the Dust Bowl, one of the greatest meteorological and ecological disasters in world history. And his movie was awful. Ah, uh, well, she's fat. <gasps> Laughing is fun. That doesn't prove anything. Well, folks, it looks like to settle this, we're going to have to take a trip back into early 20th century America and find out what really happened in the Dust Bowl. Well, before we get to the dust, let's take a look at how we got there. <clears throat> Believe it or not, this great calamity started with an air of prosperity and ingenuity. The expansion into the west and the creation of the gas-powered tractor meant that more territory was being tilled and converted into farmland than ever before, feeding an ever-growing global demand for wheat, but also unrooting thousands of acres of topsoil. No one anticipated the massive impact human action could have on the land or the planet. <clears throat> Allegedly, I don't remember any of this happening Ugh. in my film. Wow, oh, everybody's a critic. Yeah. Oh. Then, in 1929, the Great Depression hit, and suddenly, the demand for wheat was gone. But the damage to the soil was done. And soon they would feel the wrath of Mother Nature. 
much of the country experienced a drought, with some parts of the high plains not seeing enough precipitation for as long as eight years. And without water, eight years is a very long time. It's estimated that in one year alone, as much as 850 million tons of topsoil simply blew away. And the loose soil created dust storms that swept through the nation. That's right. Giant clouds of dirt will push by storms with winds up to 30 miles per hour. And I'm here in the middle of one of those black blizzards with junior reporter slash recovering Ugo, Hamblin Harrison. Hamblin? Hamblin? Ah! Ah! Boy, it's dusty up here! In fact, the average dust storm carried more dirt than it would take to build two Panama canals! Also, they suck! Chip, please feed my iguana! No. The storms grew more frequent and more severe, with 14 one year and 38 the next. In 1935, one of the most destructive storms, dubbed Black Sunday, winds reached up to 60 miles per hour, with dust so thick it blacked out the sun. <coughs> Back to you, Michelle. These weren't just dust storms. They were electrified as static built up between the ground and dust particles in the air. One dust storm even had enough electricity in the air to power all of New York City. The increase in static electricity even led to many farmers stopping shaking hands altogether. <laughs> they did this for fear of creating a dangerous shock that could knock each other to the ground. <laughs> But that wasn't the only change of culture. No! In the face of such biblical hardships, many resorted to superstitious practices, such as the killing of snakes. People tried anything to make it rain, even firing off rockets, carrying dynamite into the sky. Let's not try that one. No promises, rookie. Superstitions. Just like all that round earth nonsense people are always on about. Douglas, people just want a healthy planet. Why do you have to be such a Scrooge? Huh, to that sophomore literary comparison, I say bah humbug. And also you're fat. How are you just standing there? My horseshoe, it's lucky and heavy. I'm greatly depressed. In the harsh dry conditions of the Dust Bowl, one of the only plants to prosper was the Russian thistle, or as it's better known as, the tumbleweed. Times were so desperate, people began to brine the plant, making it edible. One town even tried to celebrate the practice by holding Russian thistle week. Blech, it tastes like mummified porcupine. Oh, oh delicious. Oh, seems this so-called a uh, dust bowl is more like a flavor bowl, if you ask me. Hmm. Scrumdrelescent. Well, I'll tell you what's not that word you just made up. A plague of locusts. Yes, on the rare occasion when the storm subsided, the farmlands were overrun with jackrabbits and grasshoppers. Hmm. Clouds of grasshoppers <laughs> as large as 23,000 per acre <laughs> swarmed the heartland. Mm -mm. As President Franklin Delano Roosevelt put it, what the sun left, the grasshoppers took. Hey, why do you get the jackrabbit? And I get all these locusts. <laughs> oh God, I get with the wind? That's it, I'm putting in my two weeks notice! Due to the Dust Bowl and the Great Depression, Times were so hard, many people stopped having children altogether, hitting the lowest birth rate in the nation's history. And what kids there were frequently jumped town, riding the rails in search of a better life. But even in the darkest hour, all hope wasn't lost. On May 11, 1934, the biggest storm of all hit the East Coast. It was two miles high, spanned eight 
1,800 miles and weighed 350 million tons. It affected the whole nation, dumping 12 million pounds of dust on Chicago and hammering the eastern seaboard. What? A world without Chicago-style deep-dish pizza? That sounds terrible. I thought you said all hope wasn't lost. It wasn't, because even as these mighty winds buffeted the Capitol building, Congress was inside working to pass multiple soil conservation bills to help save the land and stop the dust storms from ravaging the country. These are laws that still exist to this day as part of the U.S. Farm Bill. My puppet god, what a thrilling ding -ma. That's right, Douglas. Because when people face reality and work together, we do incredible things, even in the face of overwhelming adversity. Very nice, Michelle. Uh, normally that's the kind of thing I say. <laughs> Tell me, mm. is there time? Mm. What day is it? What day is it? It's Earth Day. Oh, by Dick, and she's right. Thank you for opening my eyes and increasing the size of my already dangerously enlarged heart. Oh, I'm off. In fact, this very moment, I'm going to start work on a new script about a certain handsome young filmmaker with a character arc. <laughs> I have no idea what just happened. I feel irrelevant and hungry. For once, Dale, we're on the same page. Anyway, folks... From all of us here at Future Puppet News, we want to wish uh -oh. you a... Uh, look, look over there. Hmm? It's uh, raining men. Sounds like a situation that calls for a top-of-the-line meteorologist, huh, Michelle? Time for Michelle Lightning Garcia to strike. Pah! Hmm. Mm -hmm. From all of us here at Future Puppet News, we want to wish you a happy Earth Day and remind you, no matter what planet you're on, take care of it. Oh, this must be the end card. <clears throat> so pancake, subscribe. And to watch more future puppet news, click over there.